Hi, I'm Mike with Energy Panel Structures and today we're here to talk about the most efficient way to do electrical wiring in your structural insulated panel. Joining me today is Tim Zimmer. Tim's a longtime EPS dealer and custom home builder here in Omaha, Nebraska and he's going to help us with the demonstration on how to do wiring. Tim, uh, you've been with EPS for a number of years. How long have you been involved in custom building with uh, structural insulated panels? Uh, I actually learned about these when I built my home uh, in 2001. That's when I first learned about SIPs. So I've been using them ever since and that's the only thing I'll build out of is SIPs with EPS here. Great. Well let's uh, let's dive in and see what we can do in terms of running wire. Um, Pre-drilled pre at 16 and 44 inches are already for you horizontally. So I like to put the outlets at 14 inches up to the top so I can just pop right up into that 16 inch channel and go horizontal no problem. And then I also, they also marked approximately every eight foot vertical, so I'll line it up on that too so we can run a home run down it and then feed them horizontally to connect them all together. So I like to make a little jig here so it takes all the measuring out of it. So I simply take my jig right here, put it on right here, I just take a circular saw here. Then I just take a drywall jab saw. Cut the foam a little bit more. If you take the time to do this, it slices the foam nicely so when you pop that out, it doesn't dig a big chunk out. Then I, you can take any kind of little pry bar, a little six in one tool, slide it in. You can just pop it. You'll hear it pop. And just pop it right out. So there's still a little bit of leftover in there. You can clean it out a little bit. And then we just use the standard box, cut the ears off with the nails, make sure she fits in there. So it sticks out your half inch for your drywall. And right here, you can see the channel is right here my horizontal and then right up here just two inches up which is an easy dig up you can pop up and go horizontal so when it comes time to put this wire in we'll actually get the wires pulled foam it and then we'll just put a couple of shims in there until the foam dries no problem. okay uh, we've talked about uh, Tim's practice here and uh, and many uh, builders in terms of the way that they position the box Again, you can see the marking here for the horizontal chases with your, uh, uh, to run your electrical wires. And uh, uh, just to, uh, as a clarifier for uh, anybody out there, certainly the electrical box and the chase can come in from the side as well. And uh, that is a builder preference. And uh, just want to point it out that uh, uh, depending on local codes and whatever you do, um, you may choose to do it either the way Tim has done it or as that as an alternative. So earlier I showed you I made a jig here and marked all the outlets holes and then I cut it in with the circular saw. If you're not comfortable with that, a lot of guys just use the three and a half inch hole saw, or this is a four and a half, works fine. So you'll just center it right on there and drill that hole. The extra cutout doesn't hurt a thing. It actually gives you a little bit more room to pull your wires through because when you set that box, finally you'll foam it and stick your box in, and then I usually just wedge a couple shims in to hold the box so the foam dries. So this is another option, rather than a circular saw, works great.
Okay, just want to take an opportunity and point out, here you can see the vertical chase and, and uh, Tim has run the wire down from the top. You can also see the horizontal chase running there. One thing to kind of note, and you can see it here after he's cut it out, the foam that you see here is our Neopore foam. This is the latest technology. You can see that it's got a, a gray or a silver color to it. Basically the difference between this and regular expanded polystyrene is the Neopore foam has uh, graphite in it. So it gives you a higher R value uh, than traditional EPS foam. So the panels are pre-marked for us with these black marks to let us know where the vertical chases are. So I have drilled through my double top plate. So we have a, a six and a half inch double top plate and then the embedded two by six top plate. Drill through those in the center of the panel. Drop your wire right down. It's going right down that chase. And I believe I hit the bottom. So it's a little helpful either put a little black tape over the end or bend the corner, bend it around tight so it doesn't, the wire doesn't grab the bone. But it's as easy as running through conduit. The conduit's already in the panel for you more or less. So in this situation right here, we're gonna we're gonna be cutting a three gang box in right here. Um, it is not the operating panel of the patio door, so there is not a chase right here. Our chase is over here in the center of this panel. So we're we'll, we'll be running our wire down here, and what we can do is simply drill a three and a half inch hole saw right here and pop this out. In that situation, then we would simply use a flex bit right here, go we'll drill through this hole right here and over to this box. So even though your outlets and or switches don't match up with all your chases, it's all a simple, simple project. Just one extra hole right here, popping this hole doesn't do any harm at all. In fact, once you're done, you can foam it and just pop it right back in. Hey, uh, just want to take a few minutes and thank you uh, for your time here today, Tim, and, uh, and just kind of go back through some of the uh, more helpful tips that, uh, that we've reiterated. Uh, again, tell just a little bit about the importance of pre-planning when it comes to electrical. When, you, when you're laying out your panels here, and your, your panels are laying horizontal here on some sawhorses, and you you got your bottom plate uh, already lag bolted down, you're going to want to measure over from your previous panel. So for instance, we would measure from here and we know where our next electrical chase is. So this mark here on the floor indicates that I have drilled through that plate, through the floor, through the floor into the basement. So in case that electrician wants to use that hole, it's there and available. So definitely take the time to drill your holes down. The ones up top, if you're on a gable end, obviously it's not a problem to get the drill in there. And even on the rake end, because we use our energy hill trusses, there's plenty of room to get your drill up there and drill down. So these, these ones here, you don't have to drill right away. Definitely pre-drill the ones at the floor. It'll make everything go a lot smoother. Complete details in terms of the EPS construction manual. They, they take you through step by step the processes that we've discussed today and, and give you a good reference. So. Um, the last thing I want to talk about in terms of the building envelope, and you touched on it with the, the, the importance of sealing uh, around uh, uh, both your horizontal and vertical uh, chases. Do you want to just touch on that for a second? Yeah, definitely. The, I think one of the most important ones is the ones up top. Uh, because obviously you're depending on what thickness of insulation you put in here, but definitely just take the time and seal all those holes up top. If you drill something that you didn't use, especially just go, go, go around the whole perimeter and, and foam those holes in. If there's a little gap between sheeting and, and your double top plate, take some caulk and caulk that. That's an easy fix at this time of the game. It'll, uh, it'll really help that uh, attic insulation perform better.